Okay, the Kings, 34 and a half. I feel bad about this. I think this team's going to be incredibly fun. I think they have a chance to win 40 games, and this is a stay away for me. It's just that they're like the 11th or 12th best team in the West. And while I really am going to enjoy watching Kings games, I have such substantial worries about what they look like defensively that I can't get to an over. Uh, as much as I'm going to enjoy watching Kings games, as much as I want the Kings to be good, I just can't quite get there. Let's stay away. I don't, like, like we talked. I think we talked about it last year. Like, just do you want to invest financially, emotionally in the Sacramento Kings any more than this is a, this is a fun team to watch sometimes? At 10 30 at night. Oh, I don't even think it's going to be sometimes. Like, I think they're going to be genuinely fun. Like, the Demonte Sabonis I, in De'Aaron Fox pick and roll is going to be great. They have like real second side shooters now with so. Keegan Murray and, uh, you know, obviously Keegan. Harrison Barnes is still there. And, uh, Malik Monk is a good offseason acquisition for sure. them to eat up minutes and knock down shots. Like, sure. I, I am, I am genuinely like excited about what this team looks like. I, I think that. They're going to be a really, really fun team to watch, if only because of that two-man game that has all of the surrounding pieces that really make sense around those two. I can't quite get to a situation where I think their defense is going to be sound enough to where uh, this this works, unless Mike Brown is uh, just a, defensive a, a god warlock. in a way that, yeah, maybe he is, yeah. but it's going to be funny because like that's why they hired him, and they're still going to be bad, and it's not going to be his fault. It's just look at that roster. Um, yeah, stay like away. This stay away. This is a mid 30s win, low to mid 30s win team. But, like, again, same thing with the Blazers. Like, just not a lot of not a lot of spots where you get wins every night in the Western, it's yeah. really in either conference. Like, it's just gonna be competitive next year in the NBA. Like, there's just it's the same as last year where there's just not there's not enough teams that are in full on rebuild right now. That, like, there's like what six teams that are yeah. rebuilding maybe fewer that are like committed to it. There's probably like four teams that are committed to a rebuild right now in the league. Yeah, like I, I would say Utah, I would say Houston, I would say okay. the thunder, um, Spurs, the Spurs, Indiana. Yeah. Although Indiana's kind kind of thinks that they might not be that bad, but they're, they're, they're going to be pretty bad. Uh, Detroit's going to be kind of spunky. Yeah. Like they're, the Only magic talk. are going to be kind of spunky. Magic are going to be spunky. Franz season. Yeah. We're going to talk about them later. Yeah. No. So, uh, yeah, I think there's probably five, six teams that are, but like that's 24 teams trying. Somebody's got to lose games. It's trying. Yeah. Unfortunately, history t- tells us the Sacramento Kings are usually one of those teams. Yeah. Um, I, 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 ge- I genuinely I want Sacramento to be good. Like I, I really do, are, and and I like I think I that, even like the trade last year. I mean, like giving up Hallie was a lot, but like I like no, the idea I, of Aaron Fox was, and Sabonis. I, I've litigated that enough on this podcast to where I don't need to do that again. Um, because I'm trying to be positive about the Kings, despite I, here you go. saying I'm, I'm under sorry. here. Sorry. Um, I don't mean to bring the negativity I, I really, into a safe space. Like I, I genuinely think that this is now like a competently put together roster. I really like the close of the year from. Davion Mitchell. I think if this team was like in like 2020s iteration of the NBA, they're probably a playoff team. I just don't know that right now they're a playoff team. Like it, the, the other thing about this year is like, it feels like there's more talent than ever uh, in the NBA. Like this season, particularly, it feels like the talent level is just so high across the league. And as much as I like this team, as much as I like uh, and think this is going to be a really fun team to watch and a competently built team, I, at least offensively, I, I just don't know what it looks like at the end of the day. Um, it, I don't know what success looks like here for them. Cause like, even if they do have like a top nine offense, I, I just don't know that I can get to where they're like a top. I don't know where they're getting out of the twenties defensively here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they might they might win thirty seven games. Like, there's a real possibility. Sure, um, I, I think stay I, away from you me. could you could talk me into the Kings being not that far off of the Blazers if things shake right. Yeah, but 
like knocking on the door for the 10 seed. But like we said, that still is usually a 33 to 36 win team. So I'm not trying to lock it up. And that's also like the higher end of their outcomes is that yep. there are some lower ends that are not good. Yeah. So let's get to the last one. And here's the other thing. We'll get to the last one real quick. Yeah. If uh, if one of Sabonis or Fox gets hurt, oh, particularly hurt. if Sabonis gets hurt, I think they're in some trouble. I know they still have Rashawn Holmes on the roster, but like, I think that they are putting a lot of their offensive viability in the Sabonis basket. And if he's hurt, it becomes a little bit trickier for sure. them, I think.